Before we get started, I just want to do a small disclaimer because this video I am doing now has all the secrets which I learned directly from Paco de Lucia. But these things here, which I will share, are not intended for people who prefer other techniques. So if you want or prefer traditional flamenco or other players, I'm okay with it. So then in that case, please don't watch this because you may be also feel offended and start to try to do polemics, etc. We don't want to do that or waste our time this way. So what we are talking here is only I am recording this just with the idea to help those who are interested in learning Paco de Lucia's technique. If someone is not interested in that, then this video is not for you. You can watch other channel and that's it. That's much better. That way we keep it simple all. Okay, so I clear it up. Fair enough? Let's start. You will find at the description of this video all the videos you need to watch to attain complete knowledge of each one of these points. Point number one is the fallen posture. This fallen posture means, well, you know, Savika's people technique played like this with the fall joint and have a lot of distance from here, from the top to the hand. So this thing is to be avoided. We need to have the hand closer to the top, this part of the palm. Now, number two is to try to play from this joint, from the second joint, and not from this one here. Like in Savika's people play like this, Savika's style. And we play, try to play just with the, of course it moves from here, but we try to move more this part than from here. That also watch at the description. Number three is please don't rest your thumb on the sixth string to practice. When we play, it may happen that we need to do, but that's another thing. We have to distinguish between playing and practicing. When we are practicing, Paco de Lucia told me to not rest the thumb at all. So watch the description also because I explain this in deeper detail. Now, number four is don't play staccato notes. Some people are saying that we should do this kind of, don't do that. That's useless really. Just get the notes. The notes have to have a length. The length it has play longer notes, right? unless you want to do on purpose staccato, that's another thing, but to practice picado, don't mix up this staccato thing with picado, it has nothing to do, so don't do it. That's number four. Number five is avoid sided attack, so if we are, to, we are supposed to play this frontal from this point, which I am I'm marking here on purpose, to combine flesh and, and nail. Therefore, our attack is frontal, like this. We, we don't do side the things like play like this or the other way around. That's to be avoided too. Now, number six is to have correspondence of both hands. Means when, when the, in the first position, left hand is here. To do that, because many people will have center sound hole guitars, I will explain with this, with my Santos here. So, to have a standard point, for the right hand will be by the side of the rosette here. This is for this posture. Then from 5 to 7 to 8 fret, then we need to move a little bit. And then from 9 to 12, on the third position, left hand, we need to move further. Right? Hence, this note does not sound good if I play here. Means that the length of the string and the play, the, the place you place your right hand. Uh, it matters. So that also watch at the description. There is specific videos for each one. Now I'm just supposed to enumerate them all briefly. So that's one thing about the correspondence. Then try to keep the nails shorter, rather shorter, and sand them properly. Use the technique that Paco used with the piece of sandpaper. I will also post that in the description because nails long will make you have this defect of bending the the joint and that will become weakness in your sound. So therefore, that we have to to keep the nails properly in shape, rather shorter to be able to play also with flesh and nail as opposed to if you have too long nail then it will be sounding as a skinny metallic sound of naily sound, right? So we want to avoid that in Paco's style as well. So keep nails short. This is one difference between all the school flamenco long nails and modern school is with short nails. So then the eighth thing is to avoid 
bending this joint while playing so do this thing and why this happened because of the falling post position this is main thing why this happened to bend this joint or this joint it become will become weak your sound and this is mainly here this problem which if we have closed this part of the palm to the top then we cannot do this bending thing it will not happen this because we have like a claw shape on the hand but slightly this is the perfect angle which Paco told me to do this so that is this thing here right as opposed to this one just straight like very much this 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 is wrong angle and what to speak of, of having this this <laughs> in like this 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 is very bad and of course if we have a fallen position here or fallen posture this thing then that's why this happens so provided we keep the hand properly straight with the nice length of, on the nail it will not happen that we bend the joint hence this thing Paco never did it and this is a, a will become a weak tone and uh, also an impediment for a speed etc then number nine is to avoid repeating or dragging so some people play twice with one finger so like this or repeating right so therefore we have to know what is paso facile like this and what is paso difficil also to be able to keep both things in shape that's to not repeat or drag so don't play we have to play alternating alternately alternating strictly both fingers index middle finger okay so now about the rest the, the way we do rest stroke apoyado here which, this is just normal apoyado normal uh, rest stroke like this and what we want to do is is having push down the string well I will exaggerate this a little bit like this you see that it's a little bit push down and then release it so not just pluck the string this way but to get a nicer tone and more powerful tone because it bounces the string so to, of course to do that we need to have this palm short distance here because if we are doing this how we will do like that Right, that is just not logic also in physics with the physics of the hand so this is the way that we do the, the, the rest stroke and of course we are we are using both flesh and nail combination so no just nail that's why we have to keep short nails one thing leads to the other you know so this is all important aspects then therefore that is the point number 10 the point number 11 is to keep the, the, the forearm and the hand straight so this as you see here I have pretty much this uh, way to relax the, the wrist you need to have more or less this as opposed to this shape which is there sometimes also played like this I mean, but this would be advisable that's why you have to lift the shoulder in a certain way like that you have this hand very relaxed and here you can be fast then to relax the relax the, the wrist because tension is an impediment also for speed that's also very important and that you have to check the gear you use so uh, probably get the guitar support or the footstool appropriately settled for your body if you are tall then don't, don't use small chairs so the, the chair you practice with is also important check the posture how you have some people have issues in the shoulder etc because of pulling the 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 arm instead of from the back muscle from the shoulder muscle that's also another this is posture related stuff which you need to to also check and of course you could also practice sometimes switch postures in picado only you can do because this is the point in which you can practice also scales and does them affect you negatively if you are tired of practicing with the cross leg etc now for, for playing with thumb we cannot do that because this will be very awkward to be this way that I also explained in the video especially so that's this point and of course we need to come to the understanding of proper measurements as well as for example if we have here uneven distances on the bridge or too narrow space then of course things are all over or what to speak of having different distances between a string and a string that's also bad so you need to check that that's video called 
the emperor is naked, the blind fo following other blind. Uh, so check it that in the description, and then you can watch what is the thing. Because advice, what Paco de Lucia used personally, he advised so much for for a bigger space, 62 millimeters, which is no standard guitar has. Well, anyway, you check it there. So that is about checking the gear you have to have the hand straight and relaxed. This is important because posture, otherwise there will be an obstacle with injuries or pain in the shoulder, etc. because of a wrong posture thing or problems in the hand because of wrong measurements or too, like too high action also. If you have a guitar which, which has excessively high action, then that will be detrimental because you cannot practice properly or if this is less than 60 two millimeters from the sixth string to the first string. Well, that is point 11. Now, point 12 is to, when you are playing the piccolo thing, having the hand straight and close here with the proper angle of this, also proper placement according to where you are in the left hand, so mo both hands need to move up accordingly together. This hand cannot be here or here and the right hand in the same place. That doesn't make any sense. And of course, you will not sound properly. And certainly, that's not the way Paco told me to practice. So, therefore, we need to check. Once we have all that, then we have also to not contract fingers. Like, for example, some people have this, the pinky finger, doing funny stuff here, or things like, like this while they're playing, or they have weird shapes. Uh, uh, there or contracting these two and then doing these weird things that is to be avoided. Anything which which makes the wrist tense is not good for picado. So you need to avoid contracting fingers or this stuff that's not convenient. Or also uh, <laughs> the, the funny pinky thing like this. The people have this is a symptom of bad technique. Paco never had that. So maximum this and and that was just because he was always independent in the, in the fingers. So his fingers had independence. So this is already to a normal place where he, how he played, but but moving this around or that that's not good. That's point number twelve. Now point number thirteen. You need to learn to this, to distinguish between practice and playing, because both things are totally different. Uh, you practice what you have not yet attained, what we don't have yet, don't. But when we play, we play stuff, right? So playing is not the same like practicing. When we practice, Paco played, you have seen mainly playing, right? But for those who, I had the privilege to see him also practicing how he practiced at home. So when you see that, then that's different than how he performs. This is all regarding the thumb resting and everything because he never do that did that to practice. So we have to understand very clearly what is the difference between practice, practicing and playing, and between practicing what you need as opposed to practice what you like. Therefore, because otherwise you will not do any advancement in this topic. So point number 14 is to go for a specific goal, for a specific target, after proper consideration and after a proper assessment. Of course, it should be given this to you, what you can really do. If you are helped that way, do it yourself, does not work in this. So it's better to get an advice proper of, of what you can do, actually, in, in real environment, and then how you will improve step by step. So Because if we just wonder, I practice a little bit of this, a little, little bit of this, a little bit of this, then some people tell me this every day that I see how they practice, they don't have any target, mainly people who doesn't, do not have a teacher, they don't know what to do, so they do this and that, this and that, and then they get, get nowhere after years, so have to avoid this wasting time thing, it's, it's what it will be accomplished only by this doing yourself philosophy, or by just doing a little bit of this, little bit of that. I explained that, if, for example, if you play another technique, in case you want to change, your technique from all the stuff to this, you have to consider if it is worth to do it, if you want to do it, and how you will do it, either gradually or radically, all these things. So, in fact, I, I help many students with this, in my experience, it's an interesting aspect because very few could change it, and in fact, they play better now. Because, in, in my opinion, and of course in our opinion, we followers of Paco de Lucia Technique, 
this technique is is so much superior to any other technique. That's what the thing. Uh, with all due respect, I say it, right? Now, this is the point 14, go for specific targets. In the study program, we have different scales, how we played with patterns, without patterns, in one string, in two strings, etc. So this is the goals of the fingerings itself. The very fingerings we, we use are the ones that Paco did practice. So, in the minor melodic scale, minor harmonic, whole tone, etc. So then another thing, which is the point number 15, and this is ultra super important when you come to this 15 point, is that you need to record in video, video record your practice and check it, watch it, see what you can perceive. And also, of course, for those who are in the study program in the Skype lessons, they send it to me and then we talk about it in the lesson and then I can tell you how you can improve day by day by watching what you did. This, cha this channel has 2,000 videos today this channel you are watching and I hope you can learn this from me because probably this is the biggest channel of music lessons in the world in any instrument and in fact I learn a lot from seeing just from watching myself correct a lot of stuff so this is my experience and I can prove how this is useful so in our study program all the students record their practices or their homework is recorded in video, not that they imagine or they just talk in a comment, I do this, I do that, no, no, no. Also, if you want to show something, show me in video, you playing, not talking or writing in mails or comments, playing, you playing in a video, this is what I do, and that's it. And that way we can talk in a very high level, which is what Paco deserves and, and how he explained me it should be done. So, therefore, you need to record mandatorily if you want to improve you need to record yourself how you play the scales. That I will also post in the description how to do it, how to do your homework, etc. All my students, they know. This video is for everyone, for my students, for those who are also not my students and are people interested in learning this. Because those are 19 points, it's too much. Nobody, if you don't learn this from me, nobody will explain this to you because people don't know this, even the professionals or anyone. So catch this advice because this thing here is pure gold okay then now that is recording yourself because there you can see why wow what, what is this i'm dragging here repeating or i'm bending or have too much distance the hand is, is not a straight many things you can observe when you are playing you are busy playing and you cannot see what you are doing actually but when you watch yourself from outside as if you were not that person playing then then now you can become objective otherwise undermining all of yeah the subjectivity caused big damage there you need to become objective to improve so this is this advice to become object objective that's why we get proper assessment we have goal a target very clear target not vague stuff there and we know what's the distinction between practicing and playing okay and record everything record your practice and record your homework so that's number 15 so the number 16 is to get supervision because at some point also in my experience I, I taught hundreds of people in, in over the years and many of them they told me you know what I am stuck in the speed or this and that and then why they get stuck at some point some believed someone told them or I don't know what but some, some of them believed that they cannot play piccolo fast or anything so they gave up and said yeah anyway this is how I play this kind of stuff will not happen when you have supervision because your potential is huge actually probably it is and if it is or not you need to know that by expert supervision so this is number 16 because that will give you maps where to go it's like if we have GPS that's the teacher right because the GPS tells you how to get to the point so we need that guidance. We cannot go just wandering a lot because you will waste a lot of time. The proof that this is true is how much time you already lost in this wandering over without supervision if you didn't have it. So that's number 16. The number 17 is, is always work with the metronome. So when you play, you put all, all the time metronomic stuff. And Paco said, you have to practice with the metronome all the time. I will post a video where he, Faruco, Faru, he's the dancer of Paco de Lucia for more than 10 years in his last group. 
he said that Pac advised him to practice always with the metronome and he got so much benefit out of it and, and advice for life actually. So watch that also. The metronome is very important to work with the metronome. At the description you will find everything. And then the 18th point is to try to use the blindfold to play with the blindfold once you have uh, accomplished all the other 17 points. This is the last one to follow which is to take away don't need to watch the fretboard to play so you can put a blindfold and this is the difference between mastering the fretboard and just playing normal way so we have to also train beyond the get to the touch in which you know really your guitar you don't need to watch the fretboard so you can use a blindfold and this is the point 18 all the videos of each specific topic sometimes are two or three of each topic because if you want to go in depth to every go deeper in this knowledge you need to watch specific things so that's it I assure you that if you follow these advices for sure you will get a perfect picado technique in Paco de Lucia's style